Good morning and welcome to another Breakfast in Barbados. My name is Carol Toppin and I have a very special guest with me this morning. She doesn't even know it. I think she does, but she makes women very happy. Her name is Margaret King. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Carol. It's so nice to be here. Ah, it's so good to have you. Thank but you. I'm going to let everybody know how you make women happy. We also have Chef Jason Brathwit, and he's going to be preparing something really delicious for us this morning. So don't go anywhere. Margaret King, the lady who makes other ladies happy. <laughs> Tell everybody what you do. I am the owner of Magnolia Chocolatier. Stop right there. Magnolia Chocolatier. The key word there being chocolatier. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I design and create chocolates mm -hmm. and confectionery pastries. Mm -hmm. um, and I also produce Barbados Chocolate and Pastry Festival. Barbados Chocolate and Pastry Festival. We're going to come back to that because okay. just the name alone makes me smile. Let's talk about you, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was born here in Barbados. Uh, immigrated to the United States when I was a little, little girl. Mm -hmm. um, so what part of the U.S. did you live in? Connecticut. Okay. About 45 minutes outside of New York. Okay. So I knew that one day I'd be moving back to Barbados. So I started making my little So you steps. kept in contact? Did you come back? Um, came back like in the summers, mm -hmm. you know, for crop over. Um, like sometimes love. once a year. And then I found myself coming back two times, three times, four times a year. And it was like my distressing vacation okay. when things were stressed out, you know, kids, school, work. Um, uh, I would come here. So it was always Four days, home. Five even, days. Yeah. even though you were away, it was always home. It was always home. Mm -hmm. So I knew I would move back here one of these days. So I, my parents were coming back to retire. Okay. And I had only been here maybe two weeks out of the year, three weeks out of the year. So I decided to come for 30 days and just try it out. Um, but I had already registered my businesses here like <laughs> 2004, so 2006. So it was done. It, it was, was a done It deal. was done. Mm -hmm. Got my national ID card, the whole works. Wow. And um, so I came for 30 days and stayed for eight months. Wow. And then went back for three, came back for, you know, it just so got back it and forth. It kept getting shorter over in Connecticut right. and longer in Barbados, basically. And, and one day I just said, all right, that's it. I'm going home, home, home. Wow. Yeah. That is fantastic. So. All right, well, let's talk about this chocolate thing. Mm -hmm. Now, most women, most women will tell you they love chocolate. Yes. But you've taken it a step further. How did you get involved with the whole chocolate industry? Was it a love of yours, just eating chocolate initially? Well, well I love chocolate, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But I think I, I kind of fell into it mm -hmm. because uh, my mom and I took cake making class. Okay. Uh, Wilton School mm -hmm. of Cake Decorating. At some of the retail stores, they had uh, the cake decorating classes, six mm -hmm. weeks or something like that. And then you could go on and take different classes. So we took a cake decorating classes, started making cakes. Mm -hmm. I would make children's character cakes, like Batman, mm -hmm. Princess Cake. Mm -hmm. Not really delving into like wedding cakes or anything. That was never my thing. I didn't want to get so elaborate. That yes. is a lot of work. And then going to the baking supply stores and things like that, then I saw the chocolate, chocolate making supplies. And I decided to try it, and that's how I started with the chocolates. You just go pick yeah. up some chocolate making supplies, yeah. bring them home, and you try a thing. Try a thing, and then I would sell. My mom would sell them at her job. I would sell them at work. Friends would sell them at work. and. That's how well, let's talk started. about that. You don't get from trying a thing to selling instantly. Tell me about your first couple of times trying to make chocolate and, and tasting it. And did you go terribly wrong at any time? Mm, not really. Wow, you're a natural. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know, it's, it, well, you have to know how to, how to melt it properly, mm -hmm. temper it properly. And um, back then, it wasn't so much, so advanced. 
as it is now. Like you, you saw some of the chocolates that I brought mm -hmm. um, with the different colors. And, and we're going to be seeing some of her chocolates. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, it was not that advanced. I mean, I, I would make chocolate bars with like Nestle crispy, crunchy things mm -hmm. and, and nuts and um, those kinds of things. So it was not this airbrush, you could airbrush chocolate. It's with, with um, colored cocoa butter which wow. is made from the cocoa mm -hmm. bean. And it's just, so when I, had, I, when I left it for a long period of time and went back to it, I was like blown away. At the, at, at the advances at the, and yeah, things that you can do now. Yeah, yeah, and wow. like, oh goodness, okay, so I have to relearn. <laughs> <laughs> so starting out really simple and just mm -hmm. doing basic chocolates. Yes. Let's talk about choosing your chocolate mm -hmm. and how you choose the right because I know there's a certain percentage and right. all that kind of thing when you really get advanced and milk chocolate as mm -hmm. opposed to dark chocolate sweet semi-sweet right those kinds of things um well the the best thing to do is to pick the best chocolate that you can afford mm -hmm. if you're going to make chocolate um the ones that you would find at the store which are great for like making chocolate chip cookies and things like that, um, are not as as good for making chocolates as the say like the Belgian chocolate mm. or the ones with a higher percentage of cocoa mm -hmm. solids. So that's where the percentages come in. The higher percent of cocoa solids, the more, the better the chocolate it is, yeah. and also the darker it is. And I, I realize that a lot of people here don't like. They like the sweeter chocolate, like, like the milk chocolates. Chocolate. You do like dark, I dark love chocolate? dark chocolate. Really? Okay. That's good Very, to know. very good. That's good to I know. love it. I love it. Yeah. But you are right. We tend to go for something a little sweeter mm -hmm. and things like that. I find mainly that's an international phenom phenomenon. It's only people who are really into chocolate that yes. you see would start really right. going into dark chocolates. And yeah, that have kind of tasted the better chocolates. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. tend to go towards. Because your palate changes once you start tasting the better stuff. Um, and mine, I never liked dark chocolate. Mm. Mine was always milk chocolate. Yeah? Yeah. And then as my tastes change and as I started tasting better chocolate, I can go towards the dark side <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> as she goes towards the dark side. <laughs> but, but not too far. I, I think 58%, 64% mm. would be the Just darkest I would go. Yeah. But I've seen 100% dark chocolate, oh, 80%. It's really... It's Bit bitter, bitter, for me. bitter, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's talk about um, coming to Barbados. You mm -hmm. finally say, "Well, look, I'm coming back home. I'm leaving Connecticut. I could as well because I'm spending more time here yes. anyway." You come, you register your business. Mm -hmm. Now, it's one thing to register a business, but actually getting it rolled out and, right. and setting things up properly. Yeah, take me through that process. Well, I did some research and found out you have to go to corporate affairs. And I did that, registered the business in like 2000, I think I did one in 2004 and one in 2006, but I didn't move back till 2011. Okay. So s five, six years mm -hmm. prior is so when I registered. The final right. Mm -hmm. And then, so um, it was only when I, I came back that I started, um, you know, business, the actual business here. Um, so it's, I, I, I'm kind of like a serial entrepreneur. I do a couple different things. I also serial own a, tra a travel agency, so. Okay. Yeah, so that's well, my main, some interesting things. main business. And then the chocolates, but the chocolates I love, well, love well, making. As you're here, tell me a little bit about the, the travel agency. What's it called? It's called Bridgetown Travel Agency. Okay, so not are you located in Bridgetown? In Bridgetown. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why am I not surprised, Margaret? <laughs> it's actually, the main office is actually in Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. Because I, I had a different name before and mm -hmm. it clashed with another company. People started asking me if I was that company and they started asking that company if they was my company, if okay. they were my company. And so I decided to change the name and I wanted a name that was close to me, close to oh, my heart. Right. I understand. And so that's how Bridgetown travel agency came about. Okay, well you see, yeah. a woman of many gifts and many talents and many businesses. She describes herself as a serial <laughs> business, what? Serial entrepreneur. Serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, we're gonna be back to talk about chocolates, Margaret. Okay. And we Magnolia Chocolatier yes. in particular, okay. but then the Chocolate Festival. We okay. really wanna focus on that. So we'll be back on Breakfast in Barbados with Margaret King. Breakfast in Barbados. Star Chick, eggs and
and chicken. Eggs are the most affordable source of protein around. They contain choline to help with your memory, as well as vitamin A, B, D, and K. Eggs promote healthy hair and nails because of their high sulfur content and wide array of vitamins and minerals. Starch eggs are very, very tasty. Be wise and follow the star, I say. Eat starch eggs each and every day. Starch Season your fish and fresh veggies in perfect harmony so that you hit the right note from the very start. Ah! MIS spices have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island wide at all leading supermarkets, MIS spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder basil leaves, celery salt, and blackened spice. Celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products, making it special for you. For you. For you. For you. In 1880, in Battersea, London, Adam and John Clayton blended three worlds. They blended the mystical cola nut that John had brought back from his last trip to West Africa kent hops from England and sugar from Barbados in hope to share with the world the exotic Barbadian, African and English flavors. In a full body non-alcoholic drink, they founded the wildly stimulating Clayton's Cola Tonic. Enjoy as a mixer with soft drinks, as a chaser with spirits, or straight over ice. Straight over ice. Straight over ice. Straight over ice. Breakfast in Barbados. Good morning and welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados. I'm Carol Toppin and with me is Margaret King and she's from Magnolia Chocolatier and we're talking about the Barbados Chocolate and Pastry Festival. Yes. This, just the name, <laughs> sounds delicious. This will be your second year, 2016. Correct. So tell me about um, how you decided to put on this Chocolate and Pastry Festival. Why, not how, why? Um, well, I, I create events. I used to do some event planning Cereal with the, with the <laughs> chocolates and balloon decorating and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my, my main things with the chocolate was a chocolate, um, a balloon bouquet with the base would be a box of chocolates. Nice. So that would hold the balloons, the, the helium filled balloons up in the air mm -hmm. and the base would be chocolates. And I would deliver that for Valentine's, Father's Sounds Day, really Mother's pretty. Day. Yeah, it was a lot of fun work too <laughs> but um so i do i create events and i had done um as a, as a travel agent as well we do events based around holidays so if it's crop over you know you're doing a, a travel event mm -hmm. for crop over mm -hmm. um and so i decided i had done a spa week which is another international event i like the international events focusing on um promoting local but focusing on the global Right. Uh, you know, world around you. Um, so I did the spa week, and then um, I decided I had been to a chocolate festival in the States and um, decided to create a chocolate festival here. Because mm -hmm. my thing is always to promote Barbados. Um, and I called up the guy who did the, Marty, the guy who did the chocolate festival in Westchester County, New York. Ah, uh, to get some tips yes. and ideas of how and to pull it together. Right, and mm -hmm. I said, would you mind talking to me? Mm 
-hmm. So we spoke for a little while and he's like, go for it. Wow. So that's when I decided to create the chocolate festival after making some, started to make chocolates here. So your yeah. first year, last year, tell me about how that went for you and what you learned from that. Oh, it was a whirlwind. <laughs> um, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, my concept was to do, was to do uh, like an international thing where you would have chefs and chocolatiers and come in with the local um, vendors and the local exhibitors mm -hmm. and to have everything chocolate. And um, it turned out to be more pastry than chocolate because okay. we didn't have a lot of chocolatiers here. And then some of the ones that are here, they, um, you know, they had other things to do. So <laughs> they were not in, um, uh, in attendance. Mm -hmm. So um, my thing was to pull in people from local people, the Caribbean region, as well as international um, exhibitors. Let's talk about 2016 and where, when? 2016 is going to be at Hilton Barbados. Um, I had been work, trying to work with them for since the first one, right. and we weren't able to, to get things right. But this time, it worked out, and they said yes. I'm really, really happy about it. Because my thing is to have um, a venue that says Barbados. Mm -hmm. So we've got, the, and which is why I chose Savannah after I couldn't get the Hilton the first right, time. I chose right. Savannah. Mm -hmm. There's the history. It's a beautiful location, sun, sea, and sand, and Barbados and chocolate. In a, in a beautiful location. So this is so, happening when? So this is January 30th at Hilton Barbados. Same kind of concept in their ballroom, their Needham's ballroom. Beautiful location, history, Barbados. Oh, wow. So um, it's 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is what we did uh, for the first one back mm -hmm. in March. Mm -hmm. And um, I have, I pulled in some pastry chefs from Barbados. Um, I spoke to Seabreeze Hotel. They do a lot of chocolate work over there, truffles and different things. I also spoke to the Crane, and hopefully they'll be on board with us. And I um, also spoke to Alvin Jemmett um, from BTMI mm -hmm. about having his chef um, work with me, um, Henderson Butcher, mm -hmm. and spoke to Mr. Butcher, and he's like, yeah. Everybody's all let's, excited let's about the it. chocolate festival. And then for the last one, or the first one, I also had uh, Chef Ferry, who is from Mamma Mia's Italian mm. deli and pizzeria. And you would not think anything about, you know, except like mocha, you know, drink or something like mm. that, for or gelato. But she came in and did a chocolate fettuccine demonstration. Wow. It was awesome. Actually chocolate made, fettuccine? Yes, actually okay. made the pasta mm -hmm. right on stage. Okay. So we're hoping to have her back um, Well, we're talking. We're talking all of the, the, the actual technical side of things, the mm -hmm. chefs and the demonstrations and all the wonderful things. What can the patrons expect when they come? What kind of experience would you say they can expect? Well, we have... Um, we have some really great exhibitors. Mm -hmm. We have everything from cakes and pies and sauces. Um, and it's not just chocolate, it's like 90% chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, cheesecakes, we've got someone who makes their own marshmallows mm. locally. Um, my, my lady from St. Lucia, she's coming back. And I'm hoping the one from Trinidad will come back also. She's busy, busy, really busy. and. Um, with the local chefs, we're going to do some demonstrations and hopefully a class or two. And uh, I, just, I just want it to be a little bit new and different and add something different every time mm -hmm. and just keep people interested and having them see something that they haven't seen before, um, which is a chocolate festival, of course, but then things like the chocolate fettuccine and chocolate making fettuccine. the chocolate I on I stage. I can't get over that one, chocolate yeah, fettuccine. So do you see good. the Barbados Chocolate and Pastry Festival growing into two days? That's my aim. That's mm -hmm. my aim. I originally had it for two days, but it was just, it was a lot. It mm -hmm. was a lot to handle. And the first, uh, the, the Friday, I was supposed to have a, uh, like a launch or a, a gala mm -hmm. opening. So 
that I cut it out the first time because it was just too much for me. I was handling most of the things on my own, mm -hmm. and that was like two events right there. So I couldn't I couldn't juggle both. So um, I'm I'm working Eventually. on that to, <laughs> to make it multi day Eventually. event, which is how the other the global chocolate festivals are mm -hmm. everywhere from they're all over the states, Asia, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. Um, so that's that's what I'm I'm hoping to yeah, create. I think yeah. it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. So thank you for bringing it to us, Margaret. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're going to be back. We're going to be back. We're going to be back with Margaret King and Chef Jason. We are also I believe we're going to have a mixology. Uh, a mixologist giving us something to drink that's made of chocolate. So we'll be back on cool. Breakfast in Barbados. Yes. Breakfast in Barbados. L and Bear. L and Bear. L and Bear. L and Veer. How do you L and Veer? Take a moment to L and Veer with your options of Yago, fruits, and 0% fat yogurts made from real milk using real fruits. Distributed by Supreme Distributors. In 1880, in Battersea, London, Adam and John Clayton blended three worlds. They blended the mystical cola nut that John had brought back from his last trip to West Africa, Kent hops from England, and sugar from Barbados, in hope to share with the world the exotic Barbadian, African, and English flavors. In a full-body, non-alcoholic drink, they founded the wildly stimulating Clayton's Cola Tonic. Enjoy as a mixer with soft drinks, as a chaser with spirits, or straight over ice. Straight over ice. Straight over ice. Straight over ice. Cut, cut, cut. Chop, chop, chop. Shake, shake, shake. Great, great, great. Only Maggie season up gives you the right rhythm to season your fish and fresh veggies in perfect harmony so that you hit the right note from the very start. Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados, and with me right now is mixologist Antonio Busby, and he's going to be putting all the things we love, well, namely chocolate, into <laughs> one drink. Right, Antonio? Yes. All yes, right. that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be quick breakfast shit. Well, at any time shit, really. Thank you, because anything you can put chocolate in, I can eat or drink oh. at any time. So we're going to use some oat shit. Just a couple scoops of that into the blender. And this is a strawberry flavored one, right? Strawberry. <laughs> to give it a nice flavor. I'm gonna use... So you don't measure it. You don't measure it, right? You're just estimating? You're, you're so professional. No, actually, I am measuring. That's... Um, that's three ounces I've put in so far. I'm putting in six. Oh, okay. 
So you can eyeball these ounces and stuff. Yeah. Nice. I go by different things. I've got put a two of milk and a tickle of butter <laughs> and a dash of this. Well, all as wrong. one of my friends says, a pakao. A pakao. Give me a pakao on that, then. <laughs> okay, we're going to use an ounce and a half. I want a pakao. <laughs> a pakao. <laughs> and a dollop of peanut butter. And which one is this, Margaret? This is the caramelized cashew. Mm. Caramelized cashew crunch. So a lot of nuts. Yes. So we have peanut butter, we have cashews. We have some Claytons for a little bit of sweetness and some extra energy throughout the day. In. So now we have Chef Jason Brathwaite and tell us what you prepared for us, Chef. I did for you a uh, caramelized cashew chocolate and plantain bread pudding. Plantain? Yes, I got it. You're always doing this. something unusual. Yes, I, I got to do it unusual, keep it Caribbean. You know, we just had the festive season, it just passed, you know. Wow. So I just tried a little something for you. I don't think I would ever have thought of putting plantain in bread pudding. Yeah. Yeah. I used the whole wheat curry bread. In, in here, some aloe vera cream, star chick eggs. It's one of my. Oh my goodness. We got a nice, moist kit huh. here. You see some of the plant in. Coming oh. through, yeah. My favorite. And we have things. the chocolate all melted through inside. Oh my goodness. Oh, nice. You can see some of the color from the chocolate at oh, the yeah. top. The nice, the nice caramelization from the sugar on top. I think I'm in I danger of nice. dribbling on camera. <laughs> no, you shouldn't dribble on camera. It's nice and moist. Exactly how I wanted it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so we should all have a try. Oh. Let's have a sample. I want the uh, plantain. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? Oh, I want the plantain. <laughs> There's another piece right there. Oh my god. Down in 20 minutes. That is good. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. I am impressed well, as well. I'm very impressed. You get any chocolate coming through there? I don't think I can quite taste it. Let me see if I can <laughs> get a little bit. Right oh, here. he hit this side? Yeah, yeah where you see the blue. Like the green and the blue and what? It's not that's the chocolate. Let's I don't know. Okay. Mm. Get it. Get it. Almost there, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, that's so good. Antonio, what do you think? Oh my gosh. Mm, this is lovely. Oh. I think we may eat this whole slice. <laughs> Alright, there's more. There's more. Trust me, there's more. Mm. Let me chew first. Okay. Well, so that's it for this edition of Breakfast in Barbados, and this was absolutely mm. wonderful. All things chocolate this week. Thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you so much. Antonio, great drink. And thank you, Chef Jason. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. Morning's here.